Welcome back to another Ram.js video and in this video we are going to talk about the function count by and probably this will be a very short video because it's not that strange but before we get started let me also just mention that just before I started recording this video I realized that there's this link under every function in the documentation of Ramda where it says expand parameters and if you click this link you actually get like a natural language description of each of the parameters that the function takes and and the whatever the function returns so yeah, we're gonna use that from now on because this is actually very useful. I can't see how I didn't realize that before. Um, but yeah, and also uh, beyond the natural language description of each of the parameters, you also get a, like a natural language name that they've chosen for each of the parameters that I guess is indicative of like what, what it actually is. So this in, in conjunction with uh, the type definition of the functions will probably make it a ton easier to understand the functions where, where we're a bit like, ooh, maybe this is a, uh, yeah, but I mean borderline cases where we can't understand the type definition if we just resort to this then I mean we should probably be able to understand all of them. But anyways, let's co collapse these parameters. Uh, what is count by, right? So count, actually let's, let's start by reading the definition here. Count counts the elements of a list according to how many match each value of a key generated by the supplied function. Okay, so how many matches a key generated by the supplied function returns an object mapping ah, it returns an object comma mapping the keys produced by uh, the function fn so the function and actually if we extend the expand the parameters here we can see fn is is the first thing here so let me just scroll down here so fn is the the, the first thing and so, or the first parameter so it's so it's this thing from the type definition then we have the list which is this thing from the type uh, fr from the type definition and then it returns this thing which which they explain what it is here right and and let's just let's actually jump into this immediately so what we're saying then is that the first argument is a function so it's the function used to map values to keys right the function that take values and turn them into keys the the thing that goes from a's to strings right from any type from some type a to to strings uh, and then there's the list and that's the list from which we want to count or within which we want to count the list to count elements from and then what we get back is an object which is what we started to read about down here an object mapping keys to number of occurrences in the list right so it's an object that we get back an object where key where it's a mapping between the keys uh, that we that we generated using the fu using the function and we're mapping that to the number of occurrences of that key in this list that we were passed in. So, it's, so it's, it seems kind of like an odd function, right? But it's it's not that strange because what we're essentially doing is that we're passing in some kind of list and we wanna count the number of occurrences of different things, right? So like if we have a list of A and B and C, uh, of just that, A, B, C, right? Then we would get back an object that says A is one, B is one, and C is one. If, if we have, uh, 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 a, a a function here that's called fn, right? What do they call it? Uh, object mapping function, I guess. Or no, sorry, it returns, no. Uh, uh, value of a key generated, yeah, so let's call it the key generating function, right? So if the key generating function is essentially like, I guess, identity, um, then we would probably get back a colon one, b colon one, c colon one. But if our list was a, b, b, C, then we would get A1, B2, and C1. I guess something like this, right? But let's, let's read on to make sure that we're correct. Note that all keys are coerced into strings because of how JavaScript objects work. Okay, fine. And then it says, acts as a transducer if a transformer is given in list position. So I think I've mentioned transducers before, and I think what we're gonna do is that we're just gonna bundle up everything that has to do with transducers, and I'm gonna do that in the end if I manage to successfully understand transducers by the end of this series. I guess, I mean, I'm, from my understanding, it seems to me that uh, what they're saying here is that, so acts as a transducer if, so the thing that we, uh, so it can, yeah, count by can act as a transducer if you get give a transformer instead of this list. So instead of giving a list, you give a transformer. If If you do that, then it can, can behave as a, as a transducer. So I think that means that you could count, use count by on something like, for example, a stream. 
something along these lines, lines, right? So they're saying count by is more general because you can apply it to a multitude of different data structures, not just a list, assuming that you implement, uh, I guess, transduce, or, or maybe you implement tra the transformer function for your particular data structure, uh, regardless of its, if it's a finite data structure or an infinite data structure, like a stream could be an infinite, or would be an infinite data structure, or, pot or potentially, I mean, an infinite stream is an in infinite data structure. Um, but anyways, I mean, now I'm now I'm sort of pushing pushing my limits because it's better that we wait and do this in the end when I when I have the details nailed down. But bigger picture, something along those lines. Let's look at the let's look at the example here, right? So in the example that they have here, they're saying okay, they're creating a variable called numbers. They put a bunch of decimal numbers, so uh, one, one point one, one point two, two, and so forth, and then they say count by, and they're uh, what do we call it? Key generating function is math.floor, and then they're passing in the numbers. And then as we were talking about, what they get back is that they get the string one maps to three, because there are three occurrences of one, where we're assuming that you've converted them, um, or assuming that you've rounded them down using math.floor, right? So then this is a successful match. Uh, this, this is a successful match. What did they say? Oh, so, sorry, I'm so confused. This is a successful match, this is a successful match, and this is a successful match, right? And, but then none of these would be uh, converted or rounded down to one. Sorry, I have to let the cat. Sorry, they keep interrupting my videos all the time. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. So, uh, two, but then two, this, the, the key two, the, and, and here's the coercion that they talked about, right? So even though two is a number, we get the string two, and the string two is mapping to the value two because there are two occurrences of, because there are two occurrences of the number two, or rather there are two occurrences of numbers that would be converted to two if they are run through the function math.floor. Right, and then finally we have uh, the number or the key three that maps to one because there is one occurrence of something that maps to to one. And I think, I mean, it's a fairly straightforward function. You can probably see how how uh, it behaves in this example as well. So let's just actually just quickly implement that ourselves, and and let's just jump into Node. No need for a file, um, and let's just say R. Oops, equals my God. Require lambda. Uh, we have the functions from Ramda. Uh, let's say we have count by. And what do we want to do? Well, let's just do, um, no, sorry, first the function. So let's do, do something simple. Let's say, uh, let's actually try to do the example that we mentioned before. So let's do r.identity for the key function, right? Maybe we have to do it this way. Let's, let's try it this way and then let's try it in the non curried fashion later. Um, so let's, let's try with identity. And then let's pass a, a list where we have A and B and a C, right? So we would assume to get A colon one, B colon one, and C colon one. And that's what we get, right? A is mapping to one, B is mapping to one, and C is mapping to one. And if we put additional C's in here, for example, then we get uh, three C's here, right? And And you can see how we are uh, just blindly counting them now because we are using the identity function. So there is no transformation essentially. Maybe something that would be more interesting is what if we mix uppercase and lowercase, let's say, right? And then, so then we could say uh, to lower, I guess they have, or maybe lowercase to lowercase, nope. Uh, hang on. Sorry, let me clear this stuff away. Okay, so maybe it was too lower. Actually, let's just search for it here. Lower. Oh, actually, <laughs> sorry. That's what they used in their second example as well. So, so it's clearly called too lower. Sorry about that. So then you can see, oh, oh, oh sorry. Now I still only have lowercase letters, but now we have uh, some mixing of lowercase and uppercase letters. And you can see that then we are converting them down. We are transforming each of the letters down to lowercase first. And then after that, we are we are counting uh, the number of occurrences uh, of, of each of the particular values. Uh, so then 
uh, you can see we now have five C's, even though some of them are uppercase and some of them are lowercase. As opposed to, of course, if instead of two lower, we would simply do uh, identity, t, t, then you can see we have, we are differentiating between lowercase c and uppercase c. So pretty cool, right? I mean, you can do quite a lot of stuff here, I assume. You, you could even maybe throw in something like trim, right? So let's say if we had this case where you have a lot of spaces around this c, then you can see this this C is like a, a, another key, right? So so this uh, capital C is not the same as this capital C because this capital C is just a C, whereas this one has a lot of spaces. So then maybe instead of identity, you would want to do something like pipe. Um, we want to do ident no a trim. Yeah, let's say yeah. Actually, let's just do trim first, right? Because oh, sorry. So if we pass trim, then suddenly we're back to this case, which was the same as, as this one here, right? Where uh, we're differentiating between uh, lowercase and an uppercase, but we're not differentiating between things where there are a lot of spaces that, that are sort of very spaced out. Uh, but then maybe we want to do both of those things. So we would pipe, uh, trim, actually in this case, maybe do compose, and then uh, what was the other one we did? Yeah, to lower. So we do two, two lower after having trimmed, right? Superb, right? So it's kind of like we're doing cleaning at the same time as we're doing this uh, um, counting. So instead of doing, I mean, you could argue maybe this function isn't really necessary because you could just use identity or, hmm. I was going to say maybe it isn't necessary because you could just just always use identity as the as the key generating function and then do whatever pre-processing you want to do beforehand. But yeah, maybe it is actually. I mean, it, clearly it's useful, right? Because it's very very condensed. But you could probably just uh, do whatever transformation you want to do. Like let's say so. So let's say we have actually let me just use let. So let's say we have some excess which is. Uh, this whole list that we had before. Let me put that in in this one. Oy. Okay, so excess now contains this stuff. And then we could simply say, so what we did before was count by uh, r.compose r2 lower after r trim. And then we pass the excess. Actually, we need to uh, talk about the currying as well. Let's try that after we try this, okay? So then we have that. But what I was going to say is that you could probably also just say, count by uh, or actually let's let's do it this way uh, let's say let f be r dot compose r to lower after r trim so we've saved the f away right so that's a function so then we can say count by we're still doing the same thing using f uh, count the x's right we still get the same thing but we've saved the x's in a variable and we've saved the function in a variable so assuming we have those two in other places right but you could probably then also just do count by, or this is at least what I was thinking, r dot identity uh, of x's, but instead of counting x's, we do f of the x's. Can we do that? Count by, no, of course we can't, sorry, because then we have to map, right? So then we would have to say something like r dot map uh, f over the x's. Actually, this we can do like this. Yeah, that gives the same thing, right? So, so this is what I was trying to say, like, I mean, but this is the case with many functions in functional programming, right? Like tons of them exist just to make life easier. But of course, you can you can build the more complex stuff by using the uh, more, more simple components or the more, let's say, fundamental components. So so in some sense, maybe we don't even need count by like this because we could just do the same thing like this, like count by could just be count and then we would convert first and then uh, and then count. Um, but I don't know, maybe there are some scenarios where it's like, inevitably inevitably simpler to do this also also actually actually from the transducer perspective maybe that's where it really starts to shine right because then map yeah but then again map can also be implemented on a uh, uh, or, or I mean there's a transducer version of map as well so that shouldn't be a problem but anyways I don't know I don't know L let me know in the comments if, if you have any thoughts on on why this uh, function exists. I mean, clearly, I understand it's useful. Clearly, it's it's very useful and it's, and it's simpler to write. I mean, in some sense, I would say it's probably uh, more easy to understand uh, this thing here, right? Than when we are 
expressing this whole thing here. And it, because instead of F, we would probably then have to uh, inline this to lower our trim. I mean, we don't have to, but I mean, for it to be somewhat equivalent, now I'm probably messing up the parentheses. Let's see, yeah, it's one extra. That's not the one I should remove. That's the one I should remove, right? So I mean, that would be the same thing. So the question I guess is, is that more clear or is uh, this more clear? And yeah, I mean, this one is shorter and it has some kind of, I mean, yeah, it has, it has very, it has a very sensible naming, I guess. So, so I would say for sure this one is more clear, but, but I don't know. I mean, are, are there other reasons than just like purely semantic reasons? Let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts on this. Um, before we wrap this up, uh, let me add some empty lines here. What we were going to talk about, uh, let's actually use this one. So count by F over the X's, right? So I'm just using that one because it's it has less clutter. This is we're calling this in sort of a partially applied manner. Can we also do this? Yeah, of course we can. So no problem, right? I'm not sure actually why they called it specifically like this in the in the documentation, because I don't think they usually do this a lot. Yeah, I mean, here they're actually passing No, that's a list. Yeah, here they're passing arguments. So psh, I don't know. I mean, sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't, maybe they're trying to imply that it would be it would be useful to construct this count by function and then reuse this count by function elsewhere where you don't have the data. But I mean, whenever you can curry or whenever you have a, <clears throat> a curried function, you can of course partially apply it, which is actually the thing that we're going to talk about in the next video as you as you see here. But but yeah, I mean, clearly you don't have to, um, you don't have to run it in this partially applied manner. Here you can just use, uh, call it normally with multiple arguments. Uh, because of this auto currying feature. Anyways, let's wrap this up. That's it. Uh, so that's count by you can count the uh, occurrences of different or uh, you can count the number of occurrences of something uh, or of different things right within a list or if I'm not mistaken, this whole transducer thing in any data structure that that's uh, uh, or any sequence, I guess they would say in, in, in uh, transducer language, that's uh, well, that can support transducers. I'm sorry, my language is messed up here. But, uh, but that's what we can do with count by we simply count, but we do it after we've transformed every element using some kind of transformation function, which we hear here called a key generating function. That's it. Thanks a ton for watching. Uh, remember to subscribe to uh, not miss the next round of video and I will see you in the next video. Cheerio.